Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm away Key Swedish Whiskey Girl and today we're back with a real classic amongst blended whiskies. That is the Jewers 12 year old. I have really lovely memories from this one because one of the times when I was fortunate to try this whiskey was actually at the distillery of Aberfeldy, which is the home of the Jewers. And we had it right next to their water source, the Piccilly Burn. And when we walked up to the water source, they were all lined up right next to this kind of wee little waterfall and you got to sip your dram next to the water source outside on a cold February day so definitely a lovely memory and one of the things I really loved when we were at the distilleries was seeing these old vintage kind of advertisements that they had you might not already know that about me but I'm a big vintage enthusiast so I love this kind of 1940s era uh, I have some dresses I've managed to find in vintage shops all around the world and and I'm always searching for like little bits and pieces from to tie together this kind of vintage area, era, both in my house and of course in clothing. So I've previously done some vintage modeling um, and I'll see if I can put a photo up here so you can kind of see what it looks like. But I'll also put a photo up of some of the posters that they have for Stuart's and I think it would be really interesting soon to collaborate with any photographers to do a kind of to remake some of the old whiskey advertisements in that kind of style, the vintage kind of style. So yeah, that may be coming up soon. I really hope uh, so, because I think it would be a great idea and a lot of fun. And of course, Dewar's is a blending company. And it was in 1846 that John Dewar started up his spirit merchants in Perth, here in Scotland. And eventually him and his two sons, John Alexander and Tommy Dewar, who moved on to form the blending company that we know today. Another quite interesting thing is that in the 1890s, the Dewar's, they hired a master blender, A.J. Cameron, who became quite a pioneer for the double aging process and I think you can see on the box at the start of this video and the way they do this is that they take all of these whiskies from up to 40 different single malt and single grade distilleries and they mature them then they blend them and then they mature them again to let them kind of marry together and spend some extra time together in the cast so all these flavors kind of really get together and this year's 12 year old is one of the whiskies in their core range and it's of course been aged for 12 years. And this specific expression is also known as the ancestor. And there's of course lots of really fascinating history surrounding the Dewar's and their whiskey. Uh, for example, Tommy Dewar's, I've previously mentioned this in other videos, but he was this kind of flamboyant marketing man who did some really special things. And one thing is that they believe he was the third person in Britain to get a car back in the day. The first one was the king, second one was Tommy Lipton of Lipton's Tea, and the third one was Tommy Dewar. But he was also one of the first people to crash a car because both the Tommies, Tommy Lipton and Tommy Dewar, they crashed into each other. And they may or may not have had a romantic relationship as well. And if you want to read more about my visit to Aberfeld the Distillery, then of course I put that link in the description below and if you ever get to visit a distillery and you get to go into, go into the old warehouses that they have on site and if you walk into this room there, where they have a little presentation and you turn around and face the exit on your left hand side there's a cask and it may say Swedish Whiskey Girl on it and it might be opposite a cask that has a Jiren's name on it just a fun little thing because we were lucky enough to get to sign a cask when we were there and it was one of my best distillery visits. It was really lovely and it got shown around by Matthew, one of their brand ambassadors, so it was a really lovely day. But let's get to trying this whiskey. We'll start on the nose. It smells so like sweet and fruity. But more sweetness and of course Aberfeldy, which you might expect have a large part in this blend, is known for this kind of honey character and I do think the first thing you get is the honey sweetness. Honey sweetness and some pear drops, that kind of green fruitiness. And some cereals in there as well, alongside this kind of tropical notes, maybe a little bit of pineapple as well. So very easy going, but still very lovely on the nose. And this one, of course, is that 40% CBD. But let's have a little taste. Plunge of that. It 
it definitely is one of those easy going with cheese biscuits. Half this layer of like cereal. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a dry, musty cereal almost underneath. And then you have this kind of lovely green fruit, fruitiness on top. And then surrounding all of that is that honey sweetness. It definitely has this lingering kind of cereal note as well. Quite a creamy mouthfeel. It doesn't have that kind of green sweetness that you get on some blends, I think, initially. Of course, it is both single malt and grain whiskey in this because it's a blended whiskey. Uh, and it also happens to be the world's most awarded blended whiskey, which is quite fun. But it's more malty, so it's more towards this kind of malty note you can get in a lot of whiskies. It does have a bit of that Aberfeldy character in it, with that honey nose coming through, but I think it's maltier than most Aberfeldys that I've tried. So it is interesting to see if that is coming from the casks, perhaps, or if it could be coming from type of grain whiskey that they're using. I of course don't know the ratios of malt to grain in this but most big companies I would say tend to do like 80-20 but you never really know. So lovely on the nose and I have tried this in a honey highball which is absolutely lovely and I think my new favourite drink is actually whiskey tonic. Um, I've not tried this one in a whiskey tonic, but I could imagine if you had whiskey tonic and maybe a bit of kind of honey syrup, it might be absolutely lovely, especially in this kind of lovely weather we have at the moment, so sunny here. It's still quite an elegant nose, so it's not overly sweet, but I think the mix between the honey sweetness and the green element makes it quite elegant and quite, even though it's easy going, it's quite intriguing. It has this oily element on that slight spice, like a vegetal cinnamon spice on the tongue. Yeah. But I would of course love to hear if you have tried any Dewar's whiskies or perhaps Aberfeldy. Have you tried the Dewar's 12 perhaps or any of their other range? They have quite a wide range of different expressions and they do do some very interesting things at the moment. And the most recent one was a rum influenced blended whiskey. And of course they have done one in mezcal casks, which I really wish I could try, but they're not really sure yet if it's gonna make it to the UK market, but fingers crossed, because that sounds amazing. And also, if you're looking for really nice tumblers, the Dewar's have these amazing ones. It's probably my favorite tumbler to date. They're very kind of heavy and they feel very robust and they are the perfect kind of size for whatever you would drink out of a tumbler. So I really do like these. And of course, even if you drink your whiskey out of it, it still give you this nice feeling of just sitting with a tumbler. And it of course has this Dewar's knot all around it, which combines the three Ds for the three men that started up the company. John Dewar, John Alexander, and Tommy Dewar. So yeah, if you're looking for a good tumbler, I could definitely recommend this one. And of course, if you would like to support me, I would of course be absolutely over the moon if you would consider using my affiliate links with Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange, or the SMWS. All of that information is in the description below, as well as links to my blog, my website, my Instagram and my Patreon if you're curious about that. And as always, a massive, massive thank you to my wonderful Patreons who keep supporting me. You guys are amazing. And I'm so, so happy you want to continue to support me on this journey. But as always, I hope you all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slanjava, Skola.